One of the questions that I frequently get has to do with inflammation. What do we do with it? How do we quantify it? What approach should we take? And so we're going to step back here to kind of give you my 36,000 foot view opinion on the matter. And hopefully this will translate into some actionable things you guys can do at home. First, it's important to understand that inflammation is important for our body. Inflammation is the first part of the healing cascade. So without inflammation, we can't go through a proper healing cascade, uh, which we need after an injury, whether that's a micro injury uh, in our blood vessels or a macro injury, meaning like we just broke a bone or something like that. And so it's important to not overly suppress inflammation except when we are in situations where that inflammation might actually be harmful to us. There are certain um, cardiovascular conditions and things like that where inflammation in the vascular tree might be predisposing someone to a heart attack. Well, in those cases, it might be important to suppress inflammation because the risk of not suppressing that inflammation is an increased risk of a heart attack, which could be fatal. And so there are times where suppressing inflammation short term might be the most appropriate thing. There are uh, pharmaceutical medications that can do that. There are over the counter medications that can do that. Things like ibuprofen, Aleve, that kind of stuff. And then there are the herbs and supplements that can be beneficial in helping to bring down inflammation, curcumin being one of the most commonly used or widely used. And so we have to understand that the degree of inflammation suppression we want is going to help dictate which of those we look at. So for example, if I have a patient in my office who has excessive body-wide inflammation, let's say it's rheumatoid arthritis, and they also have a high risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, I'm more likely going to choose a more aggressive anti-inflammatory in order to decrease the risk of them having a heart attack as opposed to a milder form like curcumin. Now, if a patient comes in with the same condition, but their, their body-wide inflammation, which we can roughly measure with things like CRP, ESR, things like that, if it's just mildly elevated, then maybe we don't need to go to a full pharmaceutical anti-inflammatory in order to bring inflammation levels down. Now, the biggest caveat that I want to say about this is it's important to actually try to find the reason why that inflammation is there in the first place. Because finding out where that inflammation is coming from, where the seed of that is, and then correcting that through however, I mean, it's gonna depend on, on what the cause is in order to look at how you're gonna correct that. But that's the way that you get rid of inflammation long-term. Anti-inflammatory medications 90, I, I don't want to even say a percentage because I don't know the actual statistics. So what I'm going to say is a large, large majority of the time when you come off of the uh, anti-inflammatory medication, the inflammation comes back because the medication, which includes curcumin, it, it doesn't actually address why the inflammation is there in the first place. Now, sometimes those medications can suppress and break the inflammation cycle so that the body gets rid of the inflammation source. That is always possible. However, it's not the uh, most probable thing. It doesn't occur the majority of time. And so even when we go into suppressive mode with inflammation, we are trying to find out why this patient is inflamed in the first place. Is it the fact that they are eating foods that are triggering an inflammatory immune response? Are they being hit with toxic chemicals at their workplace, in their home? Um, do they have an inflammatory fat pad around their knee, which is going to just continue to feed inflammation? And so we might need to go in with some adipose stem cells and inject that into the fat pad around the knee in order to reverse some of those inflammatory genetic changes that have occurred uh, in, the, in the fat pad around the knee in order to resolve the inflammation inside the knee joint. So figuring out why that inflammation is there is going to be how you are going to shift the inflammation and get rid of the inflammation long-term. Now, a lot of the 
basic things that I talk about on a daily, weekly, monthly basis with social media, with patients, that stuff is going to shift the inflammatory needle a, a lot. Those are things like sleeping eight to nine hours a night, drinking half your body weight in ounces of water per day. If you're using reverse osmosis, you're gonna wanna add back in some sea salt or a mineral product or something like that in order to replenish some of those uh, micro minerals that uh, are difficult to find outside of water. Uh, stopping eating a whole bunch of processed food, things that come in boxes or bags, shifting over to eating foods that are uh, coming from nature, that nature made and gave us, um, making sure that the people around you are not inflammatory, meaning that they are not negative people who just talk about uh, negative aspects of life, negative politics, negative healthcare system, woe is me type mentality. Cleaning up those things, getting into the gym, getting exercise, getting blood moving, getting your liver working better, all those things are going to be beneficial in setting up the foundation for your body to manage inflammation on its own. And so sometimes we don't even need to intervene with finding the cause and treating the cause if people just get back to the freaking basics and do all the things that we should be as humans that we neglect and ignore for whatever reason that we have, everyone's reason is different. So inflammation is important in our body. If we did not have it, we would not survive. That doesn't mean that inflammation needs to be suppressed at all times. However, it is important to suppress inflammation at specific times in disease processes if that inflammation is going to be harmful. Even if we suppress inflammation, it is important to find out why that inflammation is there in the first place so that you can get at the root cause and resolve it so you don't need to continue suppressing it with curcumin, ibuprofen, or any of the medications. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you later.